phase one is qualify. So we are basically starting with taking a look at what we are trying to accomplish, right? What our goals are, are there sufficient resources to pursue those goals? And what is the chance of success, right? At the end of this phase, the decision is go, no go. This is Time for Marketing, the marketing podcast that will tell you everything you've missed when you didn't attend the marketing conference. Hello and welcome to the Time for Marketing podcast. My name is Peter and I'll be your host for today the same way as I do for every episode. We have stumbled into 2019 and so is the second episode of the podcast in 2019. You are, as always, very welcome to find the podcast on the website timeformarketing.com where you can subscribe to our newsletter or just go to your favorite podcast app on your phone and subscribe to the podcast there. If you like this episode, go and check out our previous episodes and maybe give us a rating. So for the today's episode, we have something very interesting prepared with me on the phone line is Dmitry Krugilak. And Dmitry, hello, how are you doing? How are you doing, Peter? I'm great. I'm all right. Thank you very much here also. Dmitry, you're all the way on the other side of the big pond uh, in the US and you are the uh, CEO of Target Choice. So tell me a bit about what uh, a bit about yourself and about your company. Definitely. So so first of all, where I'm based, I'm based in California on the west coast of, of the United States of America. Uh, so Target Choice, uh, it's a marketing agency focused primarily on Facebook advertising. However, uh, what we are doing this year is we're in the process of rolling out a new marketing framework that we call the blueprint and the system for producing those blueprints, which is called the blueprint lab. So we are moving from being just an agency to being uh, an educational and coaching company. And we have uh, what I would say a somewhat different take on marketing than a lot of other people have in the nature of being more comprehensive, uh, more uh, systematized and uh, being able to assimilate very effectively pretty much every strategy, any strategy, you, any strategy and tactic you can think of and find. So this is extremely exciting. And my presentation at the Affiliate Summit was a very, very early and preliminary preview of this. I would also note uh, and suggest uh, for listeners to check out my blog at the targetchoice.com slash blog, where some of those concepts have been previewed over the last year, but this year we are really going for it. Uh, we have uh, a lot of good stuff that has been in development uh, going into release, early preview, scaling, it's going to be a very exciting year. All right. That sounds excellent. I'll add the link to your blog uh, to the show notes and I'll also add uh, your presentation from the Affiliate Summit to the show notes. So if you, when you listen to this podcast, you can go and check it out on the website. How was Affiliate Summit? Was this your first time being at Affiliate Summit? I have been going there for many, many years. So I have been, this is the second time I'm speaking there. Affiliate Summit was excellent. I would say uh, it has been best affiliate summit ever for me. But part of the reason why this has happened is I had something really special this time around, right? So, so and that's what we are talking about here. So yep. uh, lots of business, lots of reconnecting with people I know already, and lots of people who I just met getting really, really excited about our Blueprint Lab. Yeah, so your presentation at the Affiliate Summit was called How to Start a Facebook Ads Project and you revealed four different steps. So let's not wait. Let's just go directly into the presentation. Dmitry, these are your five minutes. Okay, let me just put a little bit perspective on what presentation covers and what it doesn't cover. So uh, the way the Affiliate Summit works, all the, all the presentations have to be purely educational. So I could reveal only part of what I could at the Affiliate Summit itself. So I had to focus on highlighting the problems that marketers are facing when they are uh, dealing with Facebook ads, the problems 
and the very, very rough outlines of the solution, right? So, so I could not really go into the depth of how we are solving those problems. I had to do the high level highlights. So I'm gonna recap a little bit of what the presentation is and then go a little bit further and talk about our solutions. First of all, what is the real uh, problem with Facebook ads, right? So the Facebook advertising is extremely, extremely complex. I have a slide that highlights a gazillion factors that can go into making them either a success or a failure for, for pretty much any company, right? And depending on the case, those different things can either make, make or break what you're doing, right? It could be market research, it could be having retargeting, it could be having the right audiences, it could be the right optimization rules, watching your CPMs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are literally, literally hundreds of factors that can uh, contribute to the results, right? And how do most people solve those problems? How do most people address those problems? Well, one solution, quote, quote, for most people I wouldn't say for most, but for a lot of people. It's just to pretend that the problems don't exist, right? It's just kind of a, you throw uh, some sticky substance at the wall and see what sticks, right? Sometimes it sticks, sometimes you get a success without even thinking too much and you are happy. And sometimes you even think, oh, gee, that's because I'm such a great Facebook advertiser, right? So, and sometimes it's true, but, but in many cases, it's just pure luck, right? Or in other cases, people would try a bunch of things and then say, oh, gee, Facebook advertising does not really work. It must be a scam or something, right? And sometimes they work with some agency and sometimes the agency doesn't know what they're doing and they still think it's a scam, right? And then there are a bunch of people who have sort of pre-built solution for a specific market, for a specific industry. They, for example, figure out how to do advertising just for real estate agents or, you know, or just for home improvement or just for e-commerce, right? And they have methods that work in replicable but they do not necessarily uh, know how to evolve them, how to take them to a different market, how to respond when something changes in Facebook, in market, in their industry, etc. cetera. So, so, so those uh, solutions, even though they work for some time, they're often very fragile, right? So our approach is to take a very, very thorough look at all of those factors, come up with a set of marketing checklists, make sure that all of those factors cannot be, can, can be covered, right? And take the knowledge that accumulates from one project, apply them to another, create industry templates, and essentially take those successes that exist out there and assimilate them, right? Assimilate them into plans that could be either standardized for an industry or highly customized to a certain business where you would take advantage of a certain insight that we have about it that is not common uh, across the whole industry, right? So it could be which data sources they have. It's what kind of uh, testing have they done before. It's what kind of uh, marketing campaigns they run, maybe on search, maybe on native, maybe even in a... Uh, in brick and mortar world, because you can always find certain insights that you can apply to Facebook advertising if you take a thorough and systematic approach, right? Now, I'm gonna highlight very, very quickly uh, the four phases that uh, you can see in the presentation, uh, four phases for starting any marketing project, right? So the first one is quali phase one is qualify. So we are basically starting with taking a look at what we are trying to accomplish, right? What our goals are, are there sufficient resources to pursue those goals and what is the chance of success, right? At the end of this phase, the decision is go, no, go, right? Do we want to pursue the Facebook ad project? Because in certain cases, the answer would be no, right? For example, if you are in one of those uh, uh, verticals which is banned on Facebook, you don't want to do this. Or if the economics does not really support Facebook advertising, those things happen, right? So this is phase one. Phase two, if you call it diagnose, right? This is uh, doing the in-depth assessment of everything that is currently missing uh, that should be in place to run Facebook advertising successfully. And there could be a lot of things there, right? So there could be, you might need marketing strategy, you might need to implement tracking, you might need to do some sort of creative development, redesign of your funnel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So this is a diagnostic phase where we find the gaps, we identify what really needs to be fixed to be successful and effective in Facebook advertising. So the phase three, we call it the build phase. This is where all of those uh, missing pieces that are found in a diagnostic phase are being built out. And we have three parallel tracks the way, the way we define them. So one track is we call it marketing strategy. It's pretty much everything that needs to be done that does not have a, a, a technical deliverable, right? So this could be market research, competitive research, persona development. By the way, in my presentation, 
there are checklist. There is a list of checklists for each of those phases. So you're going to be able to look it up. Uh, so all of those things: persona development, targeting strategy, creative strategy, right? So, so and and in those checklists, we can we can identify what is working for others, what has worked for the same business. Uh, we would do some creative development to fill those gaps. So that's a marketing strategy. The second parallel track is a customer journey redesign. I'm going to note here, I use the term customer journey over the funnel because the concept of a funnel is extremely limited. When people talk about the funnels, they usually mostly just think of steps on, on a website, right? Whichever system they're using for this. But when you think of the customer journey, you really need to think much broader, right? So people can come from search, organic search people can go to you know a, a retail outlet every touch between you and the customer is a customer journey which is broader than the concept of the funnel sometimes you have to rethink the journey that you want to uh, push your customers through what kind of offers you're going to present at different steps in a journey and how you're going to optimize every step so it's a second track journey redesign and the third parallel track is a touch point implementation sometimes we would find from this assessment, oh, gee, we need a new website, or we need a new funnel, or we need a new email sequence, or messenger bot. So everything that is hardcore development of one of the marketing touch points goes in there. So that was the build phase, which has marketing strategy, journey redesign, touch point implementation, and the final fourth phase, operate or execute. And this is a never ending sequence of tests, uh, which take this inside, uh, these insights uh, identify what is missing, what the tests need to prove, designing a test, running a test, and based on its results, running the next test. And it never ends. Just the kind of tests change. We can go from, for example, just proving what type of creative and targeting is getting traction when we just getting started to later on, okay, we have something that is working. What is the most efficient way to uh, scale it while remaining profitable? So that's the execution phase. So I think we are getting close to kind of the limit of my time for the monologue, right? So uh, with, it, with this in mind, I will just add that the key aspect of what we do are the detailed marketing checklists for each of those line items for each of those phases and the decision support system that helps us on behalf of clients and eventually we're gonna, we're gonna have the self-serve version of this uh, let manage the strategy that covers all the bases of all those hundred things that can go wrong potentially and be able to start from the templates of standardized pre-built strategies that work for certain market so that's my summary and with all this, I would like to open the floor to the question and answers. All right. Thank you, Dmitry. That was really good. Um, what do you think, where do most companies make their mistake when preparing the Facebook ads? Is there one thing where you usually see that they have the problem? I would say everybody makes a different mistake, right? Just as I have this uh, kind of word cloud of all the things can go wrong, different businesses do different, make different mistakes, right? But I would say the biggest one, the biggest one is not having the right mindset because sometimes people think that they know something and they really don't, right? Uh, sometimes... Uh, people make assumptions which are not validated by data. And I have a few slides in my presentation, especially the final one. So I would say that the, the biggest problem is the folly that's called uh, HIPAA, uh, highest paid person's opinions. People make assumptions without testing. People also make huge mistakes when they assume that somebody's huge case study that they read about is going to apply to them. Maybe it would maybe it won't you have to test you have to design the right test you have to extract the tactics that have worked for others and figure out the most efficient way to apply this to your business for this you need a process and this is what mm -hmm. we help us um i sort of feel that people could ask themselves you have a lot of checklists preparing facebook ads does that destroy the creativity within the Facebook ads process? Excellent question. And the answer is absolutely not. This empowers creativity because you can look at any creative idea. You can break it down into building blocks. You can put them into the right boxes in the checklists, and then you can connect the dots in different ways and come up with new creative ideas that nobody would have thought about. Uh, we have seen this happen with our checklists and our systems time and again. 
when I first actually experienced this working on some projects internally, this was a true epiphany. That was that was a shocker. Uh, I have always believed in the power of process, but true, but experiencing it uh, has been a real eye opener. The way I see it, every time you find a creative idea, once you push it through this process, one one interesting, brilliant creative ideas can turn into three, five, or ten. Once you connect the dots between this new piece of uh, be, between this new idea and all other things that you know, so that's why that's really the way to go. And always trust the process. Trust the process. You can't go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Dmitry, I think we gave excellent advice to people who are going to start uh, or just continue doing Facebook marketing and Facebook advertising. Um, thank you for being a guest on the podcast. Once again, we have the whole presentation and links to Dmitry's blog and website on the show notes. If people would like to contact you, Dmitry, where can they find you? Do you have any um, conference plans for the future? The event plan for this year is just kind of work in progress. Uh, right now, I'm just focused on all the business that... Uh, uh, that I'm following through right after the after this affiliate summit. In any case, if you want to uh, reach me, just uh, check out my blog. All the contact information is there. Uh, the contact information is also in my presentation. Reach out. Uh, tell me what kind of uh, issues you are struggling with with Facebook advertising. We're going to get on a call. We're going to talk about it and we're going to see what we can do to help you. All right. Excellent. Um, thank you, Dmitry. Um, I wish you to have a wonderful week. And this is it from the Time for Marketing podcast. Again, don't forget to subscribe if you loved our uh, episode and tell your friends and let them know that this is an excellent podcast. Dimitri, thank you and thank you, goodbye. Peter.